Hi, my name is John and I'll put my hands up straight away that the topic of this video definitely sounds kind of dry. How to pass data from a controller into a view using Umbraco V8. Now I think this is a subject that a lot of people new to Umbraco kind of overlook. However, the difference between using a good pattern and a bad pattern can actually save you hundreds of hours of maintenance effort over the course of a project. So it's something key that you should really think about and strategically apply. So there's about four or five different patterns that you can apply to pass data around. One that I came up with myself many years ago that I've yet to see anyone else talk about. So even if you are an Umbraco Pro, stick around to the end because I'm hoping that there's something that you'll learn. I'm definitely gonna try my best to make this dry subject a bit more entertaining and humorous. So stick around and let's get on with it. My intention is to try and make this video as easy as possible for you to follow along. So I'm gonna keep things very simple. As you can see on the page right in front of me here-ish, um, I've got this document type called home. It has a single property, which is called image, which is of type media picker. And this is non-mandatory. Now, if I go to my content tree, you can see I already have a home page defined. Again, I can see my image property and I have my website, which has pretty much nothing on it. So let's spice things up by adding an image. Now to try and not make this as dry as possible, I'm gonna use an image of the 1980s Hamburglar. We all love a good McDonald's. Praise the Mackey D's. Now if I do a save and a publish, go back to my page, do a refresh, boom, I've got an image. Beautiful. I'm going to start at the very basics with some Umbraco 101. As you can see in front of me, I have a route hijacked controller. So I'm passing in home, which is the name of our document type and I'm passing down this I publish content into my view. Now, historically, this was how you built web pages using Umbraco. As you can see, the model is of I publish content. And then in here on line 10, we have this really icky um, key value pair lookup. Now, the big issue with this, obviously, is that if I went into the CMS and I went to my homepage, I could easily update this to say, Ugh. And now if I went back into my source code and published it, this code would break automatically and silently. I'd have no idea that the code's broken. I'd have no idea which views would be broken. My website would stop working. This is why we have Models Builder. The second technique we're gonna to cover to pass data from our controller into our view, we'll make use of the Umbraco Model Builder. So we're back in our controller, as you can see. This time, however, instead of passing the I publish content model directly into our template, we're newing up this home object. Now this home object was dynamically generated by the CMS. I won't show you how to do that in this video because it's a video in itself. But the important thing is we have access to our image property now. So we pass our home model into our view. I have now refactored our view to take full advantage of our new approach. So as you can see here, I'm no longer passing in I publish content. Instead, I'm passing in this new model. Now the home model, as I said, is being generated by the model builder within Umbraco itself. What this means is I now have access to the properties on my document type through the model. So now I don't have to worry about hard coding or that yucky key value pair nonsense anymore. I can just use IntelliSense. So I can do model.name to access the name property. I can use the image. This is amazing. So what this means for me is I can now rely on the compiler that when any properties are renamed in the CMS to prompt me where in my code I need to update things. So let's imagine CMS editor goes in, renames image, calls it something like image long, models are regenerated, the compiler is now gonna tell me exactly everywhere and all my views that I'm gonna have to update. This is amazing. So first, it means that I don't have to remember and I can mentally unclutter my mind of all the areas and all the places those properties are used in my views. It also means I can use IntelliSense, so I don't need to worry about my fat fingers, I don't need to worry about typos. So as I think we can all agree, this approach is much better than using I publish content directly. However, there are still a few issues with it and things could be better. So we are now back inside of this CMS and what do you think is gonna happen if I remove my image? Now it's not a mandatory image, so this is a valid state for the page to exist. If I click refresh and then I do a refresh here, what do you think is gonna happen? Oh no, ah, it's a no reference exception, <gasps> panic. How can we fix this? Let's go into the view, do some live coding, that always goes well. So model.image, 
does not equal the null. Deem yourself the parentheses. Save it. Now let's go back to our web page. Hit refresh. We boom. I can type. Job done. Problem solved. Now obviously this is a very small contrived example. On a normal page, which is very complicated, you're going to have to do all sorts of little bits of logic. And this is the fundamental issue of if you use the model builder model as the basis for your view. We all know and love the MVC paradigm. And we also know that the V part stands for view. This is where we're going to put our HTML. Now in that last snippet, you'll notice that we started to write some logic within our views. Now obviously writing that logic is not going to cause World War III. It's not going to cure cancer. It's not going to get rid of COVID. However, it does go against the intentions of MVC. Now, one of the reasons why MVC is so popular, it's used everywhere, is because if followed, it will give you a nice clean architecture. Now, my issue of the last snippet and putting that little bit of logic within our view means it's not unit testable. So how can I prove that that uh, has image actually works or not? You can't. You just sort of have to hope it works. And this is where, from my experience, loads of bugs can creep up in a design and a project is because you have all these if statements and bits of logic within your view which aren't testable and it causes a pain in the bum. The other issue with it, of course, is that if you start to try and change the theme or the complete design of the home page, you've got all this logic now baked into your view and you have to start unpicking it and putting it into your view model or changing it. So it's much easier and it will cause you much less effort over time if you just pull that logic and be very rigid and make sure that it's always in the controller and passed down into the view via the view model. So this basically means that the um, if you want to follow that paradigm, we can't use the model generated by Umbraco because we have no way of putting additional properties into our views. So what do we do? The first approach is called the dedicated view model pattern. So what we're going to do is create a view model bespoke to our controller and we're only going to expose the properties that our HTML view needs. So to save you the pain of watching me type, I've created this view model. Nothing special, it just has a has image property and an image URL property. Within our action, things are looking very similar than they did before. We're still newing up our home object created by Umbraco. This time, however, we're going to create a view model. So we're going to have our image URL. And that is going to be home, the question mark, image, the question mark, the URL. We're going to create our has image. And that's going to be not stowing. The is null or empty. And then we've got the same old home.image.url. This will throw an error, but we're doing it for simplicity. So perfect. Now, if we go back to our view, what I want to do actually is copy this namespace. If you don't copy namespaces and you try and live code, things go wrong. So basically, we're not inheriting anymore. We're using a model. We're now passing in our view model, which should be called home VM. Perfect. And I've cheated by putting the code already here. Now, as you can see, this code is a lot more declarative and easier to read than the previous example. So you can easily read the snippet and say model has image and it's displaying the image URL. Now, I still got the old example down here, but I'm sure you can agree this is now much better and cleaner than this model is null or empty than model.image.url. So we're creating cleaner HTML code that's easier to read by using a view model. Perfect. So I quite like this approach. However, the only downside is it is a lot of work on a massive page when you have loads and loads of properties, mapping everything can take a bit of effort. So what other options do we have? The aim of the second approach is to try and reduce the amount of boilerplate code that the first pattern produces. So one of the issues of the first pattern is if you're only exposing public properties on the page, a lot of the time you're going to be duplicating models in Umbraco directly into view model. And in a big project, it takes a lot of time to do all this mapping. So instead of just mapping properties for the sake of mapping properties, in this hybrid style, we'll create a view model, we'll expose all of our custom properties that we need, but we'll also expose the Umbraco model so we don't have to do that boring boilerplate code. So again, save you the pain of watching me type. We have this home view M model I've created. I'm exposing the Umbraco model this time 
and it's got a has image and image URL as before. Now, this pattern was very prevalent like five or six years ago. Everyone used to use it. And the thing is, if you're creating like 50, 60 document types, there's a lot of duplication which um, in setting these view models up. So one way to get around all that duplication was to create a base view model. So I've created a classic example which used to get used a lot. So as you can see here, we have this base view model which uses generics, so we pass in a T. The T needs to be of type of published, con model, published content model. This means that everything that uses this view model has to be an Umbraco type, otherwise it won't work. So let's use the base view model in our code now. So we do base VM home. Now we need a public constructor. So public home VM. Now we need to pass in the home object, call that current. And then we have base current, so that gets passed to our base view model. And that should be it. Now we don't need to expose page, so we've saved that code. To use this in our action, we now just do var VM equals new home VM view M, sorry. And then we just pass in home. We are now back inside the view of our home page. So let's talk about what is going on right here. So as you can see on line one, we are passing in that hybrid view model. So that means we've got access to the additional property in the form of has image on line three here. On line five, we've now got direct access to that model, which has been generated by the model builder within Embraco. So we can access all the properties of our document type without having to do that mapping code in the controller. So this is pretty sweet. Things are looking much better than they did. I'm, I'm, well, I'm hoping you agree. They look much better than they did when we started out. We've got cleaner HTML. We've got things which can be unit tested. However, it is still a slight improvement. Let's start writing a unit test for this view model. What you see in front of you is a very simple and contrived example. I'm hoping this will demonstrate the property that I'm trying to talk about. So on line 15 here, I'm mocking up the model which has been generated by the CMS and I'm passing it into my view model. So in my view model, if I do vm.hasImage, now if I want to test this, I don't really care about mocking up my home page and passing it into the view model. I actually just want to test the logic within here. So this is where the duplication that I keep talking about comes from, is now imagine I have this test and I want to test like 30 properties on it. And each test, I keep having to mock up my home page. Now again, this is a very simple contrived example. I'm hoping you can see where this duplication in your class library can come from times this over you know 50 document types and complicated things and you're actually going to be writing loads more boilerplate code within your class libraries or test libraries sorry than you need to so what's the alternative i think people use the hybrid view model pattern a lot because of the limits of mvc itself so in case you're not aware you can only pass in one model from your controller into your view if you try to pass in two things everything will explode things won't be nice for you so what we've got is this concept of additional properties. Now, additional properties definitely need unit testing. It's got custom business logic in here. We've also got this model, which has been generated by the CMS. This model doesn't really need to be unit tested. We can trust it because it's part of the core Umbraco feature. You don't need to test or unit test core features. You need to trust that it works. But because of the limit of MVC, we can only have one model. So we're squishing these two things together to pass it down into our view. The consequence of this is that within our unit tests, we're now having to mock that model all the time. So we've got all this unneeded duplication in our tests. So one way to get around this would be to separate those two models. And if we could pass in two models into our views, we would have a much cleaner architecture. So my question to you is, do you think we can do that? And the answer is, yes, we can. What a surprise. Otherwise this would be a useless video, wouldn't it? So in front of us right now, we have this composed view model. Now this is something I've created a minute ago. I'm not gonna put you through the pain of watching me live code. So thank me for that. Basically we're using generics here, kind of like the base view model below. So what we're doing is passing in this T page. This can be called anything you want. It doesn't have to be T page, but it kind of makes sense, right? And we're using this TV model. 
So now we have two properties that we can pass into our view this way. So we're cheating. Now the T page has a condition that it has to be a published content model. So this means that we never really have to worry about unit testing this part of our view model. The only thing that we really need to worry about unit testing now is this view model property. So let's have a look at our action. So in our action here, as I'm saying, we don't need to worry about unit testing this. We're passing in the model generated by Umbraco here. And because it's got a condition, we know this has to be true. We've also now defaulted to our very vanilla home view model, which we created right at the beginning. So now the only thing that we really need to test is this home page service. So if I was doing this in production, this would probably be in a separate class. What we've got here, you know, is some has image, image URL logic. But now this is the only thing that we really need to test. So this makes things much easier because we're going to get rid of all that duplicate code within our test library. Amazing. You will be glad to know that this is the last time that we will be in the view of the home page. So let's see what's going on here. Now, as you can see, the model at the top here is using our new composed view model. So item one is the model which is generated in CMS. Item two being passed in is our view model. In our code now, we have access to our additional properties through this view model property. And we have access to the Umbraco document type through this page property. So as you can see, our view is really clean. We don't have any logic in it. We've passed in two view models, so we don't have to worry about the pain within our unit tests. So things are beautiful, wonderful, and all is good with the world. So there we have it. What do you think about those patterns? And do you agree that my composed view model is much more cleaner and simpler? Comments below. Now I know that passing data from a controller into a view, it's not the most exciting topic in the world, granted. However, I'm hoping the last 10 minutes has shown that there's probably more to think about than first appearances. And I really think using that composed view model will make your life much easier. Trust me on this one. If you like this content and you'd like to learn more about Umbraco and web development in general, and you want to be an absolute legend, and this is the easiest way that someone, that's me, will think of you as a legend today, then please hit that subscribe button and the alert button. I'd very much appreciate it. If you want to do me a solid, then hit that like button. That just means that more people can view this content and you're doing me a favor. Lastly, I hope you have an amazing day and happy coding.